So today I'm going to demonstrate how a camera lens or how your eye can look into a three-dimensional world and give you a two-dimensional image. And actually the image that is projected onto the back of the retina is flipped upside down and left to right. It's kind of the miracle of the brain to be able to flip that so it's aligned with reality. But the geometry of how that happens is actually pretty simple, and I'm going to apply this in a computer program to take points that were initially in 3D and map them onto a two-dimensional plane. And that's actually how I generated the image in the background. And at the end of the video, I'm going to extend that simple geometric idea one dimension higher and effectively look at four-dimensional points and in that case the image that you get is three-dimensional instead of two-dimensional. And I got interested in doing this by looking at these images from fisheye lenses. And a fisheye lens is kind of interesting because it takes light from a wider viewing angle and has to more sharply bend that in and project it onto a screen. And it does that using this really highly curved surface. In the extreme case you can actually get a really wide uh, viewing angle like 180 degrees or more and get these kind of images. So this is a typical ray diagram for a convex lens and these just show how the light which is coming off the object will be focused by a lens onto a point behind the lens and that point becomes part of the image that you ultimately see on the screen. I took a simplified version of this where I just had a line extending from my points through the origin and then intersecting a two-dimensional screen, which is a distance f, just slightly behind the origin. So taking an overhead view, the camera is looking down the y-axis. To get an image of the point p, we just need to find the point at which the line intersects that screen behind the origin. So y hat is a unit vector pointing in the y direction and p hat is a unit vector pointing in the p direction. And you can use that p hat and just push it backwards by a distance s to find that point, which I'm calling p star. To do this, you just use the definition of cosine and solve for that distance s. And ultimately, your point will be negative s times p hat. And I got this expression for p star. And so using that expression, it's going to turn out that the P star will always lie in this uh, 2D plane. So you've taken a 3D point and mapped it to a two-dimensional point. I'm going to use this pretty much the exact same expression for P star to look at four-dimensional points because if you can see here, it doesn't matter what the dimensionality is of P. I did this in MATLAB and I start with these randomly distributed points. At each iteration I'm shifting them toward the origin in the negative y direction. And then I use that expression for p star to project all of these points onto that green screen. So what you're seeing is the image of these points that will appear on that green square. I definitely cheated a little bit to make it look 3D because I plotted the size and the brightness of the dot as smaller if the point was farther away from the sensor. But it's incredible that using even the crudest approximation of a lens 
is still able to produce something which looks a lot like vision. So next I thought about how can we improve that approximation a little bit. So most lenses will take the light from an object and kind of refract it down onto the sensor. And the picture I'm drawing is not the full picture, but I thought of an even simpler way to mathematically represent that three-dimensional point on the two-dimensional screen. The line is coming in and into the lens and gets bent down, and R is a vector that points from the center of the screen radially outward in the direction of P, in the, in the direction of the projection of P onto the XY plane. And so then you can have all sorts of functions which describe the magnitude of R as a function of theta. And of course, theta ranges from 0, meaning straight ahead, pi over 2 t means to the right or left, and pi is pointing backwards. So the random stars look pretty cool, but I wanted to see how this type of mapping would distort the space, kind of curve the space in the way that a fisheye lens seems to do. So I took a rectangular lattice and started shifting that towards the viewer. And here are the results. <laughs> Okay, so we're finally ready to go to the four-dimensional case. So in 3D, we had a line representing a path of light intersecting a two-dimensional plane, and we recorded the location of that intersection. The four-dimensional case, we're doing the same thing, except that the line is passing through four-dimensional space and intersecting a three-dimensional hyperplane. You can think of that as like a cube where the fourth coordinate, which is called W, is just zero everywhere, or it's just constant throughout the cube. So we're going to use literally the same expression that we got in the first part and take the p hat, push it backwards once again. We have the hyperplane sitting at distance f in the w direction along the w axis behind the origin. And to get our p star, we're just taking p hat, which is four dimensional this time, and pushing it backwards by a distance s. And we use the same exact expression to find s. And in this case, the projected points are going to be still in 4D, but the W coordinate is going to all be the same at negative F. And this was actually true in the last case where the third coordinate was a constant at negative F as well. So you can eliminate that and the projection becomes three-dimensional.